Welcome to Northern Italy, a captivating region of rich history, stunning landscapes and diverse culture. From the bustling city of Milano to the romantic canals of Venezia, this region offers a blend of maternity and tradition. With majestic Alps, enchanting lakes and charming countryside, Northern Italy's natural beauty is truly breathtaking. And no other place sums up that beauty better than the Franciacorta Cut Circuit. 1,300 metres long and 15 turns, this arena of speed features a challenging layout that provides an exhilarating experience for drivers. The track's configuration consists of a combination of fast straights and flowing corners designed to test the skill and technique of our drivers. It offers various corners of different radii, allowing for different racing lines and overtaking opportunities. But one false move and your season could be over. With us now being at the halfway point of the championship, drivers and teams are dialing up the pressure. With over 200 drivers across all three classes entering into the third round of the IAMI Euro Series, the end of the 2023 season is far from over. We had 44 drivers from the years 8 to 12 years old begin on the Friday, but only 36 are left for one last showdown. All competitors are running the IAMI X30 Water Swift engine with a 60cc displacement providing 10 brake horsepower and 7 newton meters of torque. Fuel provided by Panther and the tyres provided by Comet for a minimum weight of 110 kilos with driver included. This is going to be a very dramatic race. Jesse Phillips, who starts this one on pole position. Dan Alaman, who starts alongside Jesse Phillips going into this final, now leads the championship by only three points from Archie Lovett. Very, very close. Here we go. Green light goes out. Great start from Phillips and a contact oh. in the background and a spin in the middle of the field. It's the 9-1-1 that goes round and it's a disaster from the back of the field. Harry Williams, who had a disaster and oh, more have gone off. Oh, more have gone off at turn number two and try to call Nicolo, it. Yeah, Nicolo Perico, we had lost him in the first place uh, on the start finish straight. Let's try to see who got involved. We had four drivers into the mix, more than that even. Stan Fargo was one of the Mason Brooks, Archie Lovett, Kanishk Rao, so two of the Oliver Roland Motorsport drivers and a very furious 918. This will be for the back Mani Nivolini, yeah. who was uh, caught up as well. So we've lost in the process up to uh, four or five drivers, including Archie Lovett that we are uh, expected to uh, make his way through as we're back in the lead with a first switch of position. And this is Bob Reshov who takes the lead. But in the lead, as you can see, this is still very mixed up as Ron inside goes for second via Piana on Peruzzi. And that is Kanish Rao who is in the pit lane and out of this final. What a disaster. Now here, Peruzzi up into second place and now into the lead. The Fusion driver who had a challenging first half of the day is certainly shining here. And at the moment, he leads this final with still 10 laps to go. Bobrojov, though, looks to the inside through turn number five and takes it. Phillips dives down through as well, and the train follows. George Gibbons, motorsport driver at the front of this field, is down the inside. Miron gets that move done, moves up into third place. Phillips, though, all over the rear bumper of Bobrojov Watch and looks out. to the inside here at turn 14 into the hairpin. Gets it done. Daniel Miron follows as well. Bobrojov down into third. Phillips then continues to lead as Bobrojov now dives down the inside of Daniel Miron, moves back up into second place. That brings Jarlis Sayer back into the fight here. As you can see there in P4, going towards turn 14 again. And Bobrojov looks to the inside of Phillips and forces him to go wide there into the entry of the corner and secures that spot on the exit. Rest of the field still coming through. Sayers got up into third place now as he's gone through past Miron. Miron's gone down into P5 as Dan Alaman's got through as well. Phillips not able to respond as down the inside. Bobrojov goes on Jarlis Sayer, gets that done. Miron follows as well, so chopping and changing. That gives Phillips a little bit of breathing space here to go to work on Bobrojov. And again, side by side, back down the inside. Daniel Miron gets it done on Alaman. For oh, and a spin. Driver. Oh. Three carts off. And who was involved in that one? I've got a feeling it could have been Tony Cachafero and Noah Grenier 
And I think Sebastian Rydel was also a driver who went off there. And you see a big contact That's in the replay as well. Oh, dear oh, me. Big crash. That's his new wow. idea, actually, that was sent off by one oh. of the Fusion and hit on the side. There, on the side of the track and out of the race. 9.39. And that is Tony Cachafero. And there's the move. Motorsport. There's a move for the lead. Barbara Shaw actually lost not just one, but two places in the, in the process. Come to the last couple of laps, and we're seeing that right now. Bobashov dives down the inside of Daniel Miron, but keep an eye on Phillips now. He's got the clean air, but crucially, he's got no one giving a bump. Oh, look at the slipstream there from Bobashov down the inside and takes the race lead. Phillips now dropping to P4. Miron goes through, Alaman goes through. That took a couple of drivers out and the 955. Oh, is that Bobashov? Yes! Is that Bobashov? Maxim Bobashov who is leading. Here's the replay of what happened to Bobashov, and it was a move. It was Daniel Miron who went down oh. the inside and clipped the side of him, and both of them went off. Oscar Alias who leads the way, and he is going in towards turn 14 now on the inside, but watch out, here comes everyone else. Who's going to get the run out of it? Alaman's there in second place, Phillips is going to go for third place, but out of the final corner, it is going to be your man, Bosco Arias! Wow. Just across the line, Bosco Arias takes it from Dan Alaman, and Yubislav who crosses the line in third place. Well, what? A final. How on earth did that happen? That Bosco Arias, who on that last lap, he came from P24 on this grid. He gained 24 positions on this. In fact, no, he started this race P25 in this race. On the 13th row of the grid, we didn't even mention his name until the final lap. We had no idea he was coming through the field at such pace. In third place, and please welcome Ukrov Yugoslav. His second position goes to Dan Alaman. And finally, your winner after a fantastic recovery, Bosco Arias! Bosco, what a fantastic race. 24 places recovered and you made it to P1. Talk us through that race because it was madness. Yeah, I'm very happy for the result. Uh, we, I have to say, Thank you for the team, it was a great job. And we keep working to the next race that is gonna, is gonna go good. And thanks for the team. The junior category is up next, featuring drivers between the ages of 12 to 14 years old. The weekend started with the 58 competitors, only 36 now. All drivers on the grid are using the 125cc engine with a power of 21 horsepower and 11 newton meters of torque. Unlike the Minis, the junior class runs on the harder red compound of tyre provided by MG. The fuel once again provided by Panta. Freddie Lloyd, who was leading the championship going into this weekend, I think has done enough to hold on to his championship lead as he puts it on pole. He comes away with 10 championship points at the end of the super heats. Green, 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 as we go. We go racing on the first attempt into turn number one and the sector of turn and three. The first sector, first breaking point and good get, go, get away for most of the drivers. I've spoken too soon, a bit of a wheel tussle further back. As Rocco Cornell is uh, actually gained a place up into P2, just behind Freddie Lloyd who had a good start around the inside of turn number one. Fastest driver here in the wet conditions on Friday. And now he's the fastest and the first leading driver in this race. Rocco Coronel takes the lead. And Freddie Lloyd will have to respond here, and he does respond oh. instantly, squeezing that cut down the inside there, trying to find a piece of track. 
but he can't make the move stick. He stays there in P2 once again, sending it down the inside and Catherine Clark kind of forcing that move there upon him as he tried himself to go down the inside and he does get down the inside. But Rocco Coronel instantly fights back. That's allowing Jensen Graham to coach right back into the fray. The early stages of this race, remember it will calm down as Graham dives it down the inside of Clark and Clark now under pressure as they go back down the back straight in towards turn number 14. Bumping and barging, Graham holds on to that inside line as Louis Kaman splits the two victory lane drivers and now moves up in towards P5. As he shuts that door, watch out for Roussel as well, who's being overtaken by Louis Kaman in the process. Ricardo Ferrari with the Gillard machine is making his way up as well. Walker Cornell still split by pretty much nothing. As for the back, we have Carl Clark, Joseph Graham on the way to turn number 14. On the inside goes Ricardo Ferrari on Louis Comin, and he made that stick beautifully up to P5. What will happen? Oh. Uh, it's not going to happen because down the inside, Rocco Coronel thinks, no, I want the race lead here. And he takes the race lead through turn 14. Still heating up here, though. This is Ferrari and Mackey, who are just continuing to swap places here. He needs to do it, and now he is going to do it. He dives it down the inside through turns two and three and gets it done. So there it is. Freddie Lloyd now leads the way. Coronel down into second place. Now let's try to identify hand. There's a switch for position with Rocco Coronel. We had a bit, a bit expecting that move for the past few moments. And uh, once again, it shows the best spot to do that. This is uh, turn number 14. Matthew Sariba from MDC Racing by the look of it as he was competing down in 28th position trying to climb a couple of places into the ranks. Uh, Rocco Cornell goes for another attack in turn number five this time around and he made that stick beautifully. We haven't seen anything yet. We haven't seen anything yet into that final. Who will take the trophy in the end? One lap and a half until a checkered flag. Rocco Cornell has picked up the spot once again. Ready Lloyd very much still on his rear bumper and he's had enough of it and takes the lead back again. Beautiful performance from Freddy Lloyd. What a beautiful ballet that is. Keep an eye on Mackie though, because Mackie's close in as well. This could be a four-way battle going into the final hairpin here. Down the back straight. Here comes Lloyd to the inside. Clark switches to the outside. He's going to go the long way round. Now Coronel's going to have to defend it. It could be a first final win. Perez won. It is Freddie Lloyd in Francia Corta, and he gets another 25 championship points to his tally and extends his championship lead now by nearly 40 points. 83 champion points to Freddie Lloyd. Cathal Clark second with 49. We go to Genk at the end of August, and well, it's so, so close in the championship. You couldn't write it. As we're going to welcome back on the podium, Mr. Bonara Ettore, giving out the trophy to Harrison Maki. And position, Rocco Coronel. And finally, your winner in Francia Corta, Freddy Lloyd. What a weekend it has been. Wow, it's about time to, uh, wow, take your head down, cool down a little bit. The champagne might have helped, but uh, what are your first thoughts after this win? It's just amazing. It's my first win of the series. I just feel so great. It's just amazing. It's got Got to chill now. Yeah, still chilling, and us uh, as well, because this has been a fantastic final. Everything came together at the right time for you. Yeah, everything worked out as planned. Pushed Rocco, and then we got away, and then I got him on the last couple laps, and then won the race. The senior class will conclude round three of the IAMI X30 Euro Series at Franciacorta. From an impressive entry list of 107 drivers of 14 years plus, only 36 are left for the long-awaited final. Competitors are using the most powerful 125cc engines on the field, unrestricted, 
with competitors having 30 brake horsepower and 19.5 newton meters of torque and running the softer of the two compounds, the MG tires, the yellow compound, the fuel again provided by Panta. Kali Atkins qualified 20th on Friday in the wet conditions, finished second in his first heat, third in his second, and that puts him in the lead of the championship from Eduardo Villa by just two points going into this final. Here we go then, into the tram lines. Green flag goes out, Atkins gets a lightning start. So does Shaw Moyer and Johnson Cool, who sweep into first, second, third and fourth. Side by side as Giltez on the outside line there. He tries to find his way through and he does, but he has to slot into P5. Through sector two they go and it's still a lightning start Ooh. as Moyer dives to full second place, gets past Sam Shaw and a straight away, a shake of the head from Sam Shaw. Not happy with that. And look at Moya. Go, go, go. He might have an issue with this car because it just wasn't going there and runs wide. Oh, it's Villa. Eduardo Villa, the championship leader going into this weekend, has seen himself retire from this race. He has just lost any chance, potentially, of winning this championship. And Evan Gilter clipped oh, the no. contact. Evan Gilter is out as well of the track with Johnson Cole. By the look of it, it was. And uh, Gilter is back on the, from the grass. But unfortunately, yes, oh, Johnson Cole as well. But look at his front nose actually misplaced completely. Those two coming together in 10 of the 5. Gilter was going for the move on the inside. And unfortunately, it just all went bananas on the exit. Well, they go into this weekend and into this race, and there. On your screen, another retirement coming in. Uh, what a nightmare that is for some of the protagonists. There goes Moya. On the inside, yeah, Ruben Moya indeed. Uh, the Spaniard taking the lead for the first time of this final into lap number three. The VDK driver that was so efficient in the qualifying heat. In the meantime, around the outside of turn number 14 goes Mario Boyer on Sam Show, the Frenchman of the place. And you can see on the sideline the uh, premium machine of Johnson Cole as down the inside there, the 2-4-3 of Eloy Gonzalez gets the move done. Nine laps to go in this race, not long left, and there is a move. Gonzalez gets it done and moves up into third now. As we have a switch of position up into second place, Elo Gonzalez is now the new chaser to Ruben Moya. Eloy Gonzalez started this race in P11. He is now fighting for the race lead and he gets it done through turns two and three. Spain's Eloy Gonzalez leads the way in this Senior X30 final. It will be one more attempt to go into the final corner and it has been a challenging championship. Ruben Moya won in Zuera, Kali Atkins won in Marienburg. We're gonna see another third different winner in the IAMI Euro Series in Senior X30. Eloy Gonzalez wins across the line in a dominant performance. 10 positions gained, he started P11, he came through the field and look at that, look what it means to him. Even Ruben Moya's like, get in there lad. Get in there, what a drive, what a drive. In third place of the senior final, Kalai Atkins! <laughs> With the driver alongside you on the podium, from Spain, Ruben Moya! And finally, his first winner of the season, Eloy Gonzalez! What a race, Eloy Gonzalez. What a win, but you had to fight very hard for this one. Sí, la verdad es que la carrera ha sido bastante dura. Hemos salido en onceava posición y bueno, poco a poco hemos ido adelantando hasta que al final hemos llegado a ponernos primeros y a partir de ahí a tirar y hemos podido ganar al final. Y muchas gracias al equipo Monlao que siempre está apoyando detrás y a todos los que están detrás de todo esto que es muy grande. Well, there you have it. Round three of the IAMI Euro Series in 2023 is done. And what a weekend it's been here at Franciacorda. It's hot, it's been fierce racing. 
Next round is the final round. Round four, Belgium, Genk. What a circuit. Guillaume, I'm looking forward to it. What can you take away from this one and what are you looking forward to in the next one? Well, as you said, it's been a hot weekend on and off the track and it's still right now, but uh, we're all looking forward to be in Genk. The racing has been fantastic in all three classes with beautiful winners, recoveries all throughout the classes and during the fields. And uh, we have drivers on equal points in the senior category coming to a gang for the final round in August. That's going to be a fantastic showdown. Francia Cota, for the first time visited by IAMI Euro Series, has been absolutely fantastic. And we cannot wait to finish this series on another high. Indeed. We look forward to it. We'll see you in Belgium at Genk. This is the home of champions, Karting Genk. Who knows how it's going to unfold here in Belgium. Mini, Junior and Senior X30 contenders are going to be battling for the title and we can expect nail-biting drama all the way. Martinez for the lead! Martinez wins a Karting Genk! Let's find out. Here we go. Du Karakta. He wins a Karting Genk. And where we go racing. Ruben Boyer's going to win.